Oh, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they gave no hurt, and from and the form of the fourth man, fourth is like the Son of God. I'll guarantee you if we stay with Jesus, I'll guarantee you if we stay with the Word of God, I'll guarantee you if we don't bow down to anything that's not, praise God, to, that's, if we bow down to anything that's not in this world, we won't be in trouble. Got it. Huh? <laughs> Got it. Oh, no. I, I, I just said that you give me a little shot. <laughs> I thought you wanted to touch out of the Gatorade. Yeah, delete that thing. <laughs> you know, water is better hot than Gatorade is. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to get started here this morning. And we can talk about this in several different ways. This is a covenant. How do you say that word? Renewed. Huh? Renewed. Renewed. I thought that was an R. Uh, renewed. Covenant renewed. Did you know Jesus Christ come, shed his blood, and made a covenant with you and me? And that covenant cannot be broken unless we walk out from under it. Amen. You may have to move to the front, sister. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nobody look. <laughs> but I do that sometimes too. I'll hold mine up so I can see through the Bible. Better. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. You know what a covenant is? It's agreement between two people or more. That what you have, they have. Jesus said that. He said, I'm making a covenant on the cross with you. And you can have whatever I've got. Because Romans uh, 8 over there tells us that. That we're joint heirs and heirs with Jesus Christ. Praise God. So he said, whatever you've got, I've got. So if Jesus has got good, we need to have good. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we're going to go through trials and tests now. Don't go out here and tell uh, people, of course, they can see it that, that I'm one of these uh, preach good ch uh, churches all the time. I believe God's a good God, but I believe that there's things that slips up on us and slips in on us. And praise God, but we've got a covenant with Jesus Christ that the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Praise God. And that song this morning, because he lives, all fear is gone. Hmm? That's, that's, the, that's the demon a fear that's mentioned in 1 Timothy, it says it's a spirit of fear. And that's the one that people that's even been born again for 40 years can't seem to shake. They shake it, but it keeps coming back. Let's get rid of that thing today, okay? <coughs> Before all my people, I'm going to do, what's that word say? Marvels. Marvels. Such have not been done in all the earth. Glory to God. I'm seeing something right there that it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a great thing, a terrible thing, a great and mighty thing that's translated that I will do with you. Now watch this. What did he say that I'll do with you? Come on, that's important. So I'm talking about wonders and marvels this morning. When Jesus comes, all through the Old Testament, we see God doing marvels. Well, has God changed? Well, what's wrong? The church has I seen a, a stat this week that 50% uh, of the evangelical Christians today are staying home because of 
COVID pandemic or whatever. 85% of the people that was, that's the reason that they won't go back to work because they're still getting some kind of money. Let's, let's pray that it stop. People need to work. If you don't work, you don't eat, the Bible says. That's right. I'm not going to get off on that because it'll, it'll mess me up this morning. Because I'm, I'm preaching on marvels, signs, and wonders. Well, let's say, what is a marvel? A marvel, let's see, and I wrote it down. Well, well I'll tell you. A marvel is anything beyond the bounds of human powers or expectations. Now, God did a marvel and a wonder at the Red Sea. But he had to have some. He did. He doesn't have to have nobody. But since he made man and since man wants him, well, then he uses man to bring marvels and signs and wonders. Praise God. So in Daniel 11, 32. Now, let's look at this, church. Let's read this. And such as do wickedly against the covenant. These people... Oh, man, these people today, I just saw on the news this week, people are blaspheming the covenant of Jesus. Mm, that just bothers me so bad, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries, by the people that do know their God, shall be strong, but the people who know their God shall be strong and do marvels. Well, marvels need the body of Christ because we're, we're the only uh, people on this earth that will take force and go out and lay hands on the sick, and cast out devils, if you will, and pray for people and let God do wonders and signs through us. It's not us that does the signs. It's not us that, it wasn't a Paul, it wasn't Peter. It was Christ in them, the Holy Ghost in them, that did signs, wonders, and miracles. And guess what? We've got the same Holy Spirit in us. Can I have an amen? Amen. I believe our church is really getting close to some signs, wonders, and miracles. Well, Pastor, you said that five years ago. Well, what's time with, with, with God? He don't work in time. But when we say five years, they say, well, and I've been right there with y'all. It's been five years, Lord, and ain't nothing happened, ain't nothing happened, ain't nothing happened. Well, you know, I, I had to get down on my knees in my house and, and repent of that. Because God's always done something somewhere. There's always somebody getting saved somewhere. Always somebody getting healed somewhere. Verse 16 of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20. Now this is the Great Commission. Now look what happens if we go forth. And they went forth and preached everywhere. That's just was that's not just for preachers. That's talking about the body of Christ, the people who are disciples of Christ. And they went forth preaching the word. It doesn't mean you got to hack and go on like that. When you teach the word, when you speak the word, praise God, that's what he's talking about. Praise God. So every one of us in here is a preacher. You may not be in the five-fold ministry, pastor, teacher, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, but you are a preacher if you're born again. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Everybody say everywhere. everywhere. Best place for us to start is right here in Ball Creek. I'd say the guy with us this morning knows a whole lot about Ball Creek, where he lives. A lot of people need Jesus. Amen. A lot of people are sick, need to be healed. Amen. And preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. With them. And confirming the word with. It doesn't matter 
if we're a faith life church, it doesn't matter if we're an uh, old regular Baptist church. It doesn't matter if we're a uh, Southern Baptist or denominational Baptist missionary. It doesn't matter if we're Methodist. It doesn't matter if we're Church of Christ. It just says he confirmed them that went out preaching the word of, on, and, and healing everybody and, and giving salvation out. He said, I'll confirm that word. And like I say, Jesus and God are not on no timeline. The Bible says as one day is with a thousand years with the Lord and a thousand years is as one day. Amen? Yep. So it's not, <laughs> it's not over until Jesus says it's over. That's right. Praise God. Amen? Now, <clears throat> Philippians 4.13. I didn't give you that. One. Go there. I forgot that. Trini. <clears throat> Get on this side. What did see? I can. Everybody say, I can. I can. Mm -hmm. Don't never say, I can't. Whoa. I'm stepping on somebody's toes right now. I don't mean to step your toes, but the God of the Word of God says, I can. I can do some things. What? He says, I can do all things through my own ability. Come on, don't shake your head. Just shout me down and say, wait a minute now, Pastor. That's not right. I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. That's right. Amen. I don't know why it's so hard for us to minister to people. Uh, wherever we go, just tell them that Jesus loves them. I mean, and he wants to do good for them. He wants to... <laughs> want to give them salvation, eternal life, you know, because Jesus freed us from eternal damnation. He freed us from sickness and disease. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 24, with the stripes that Jesus bore on his back, we were healed, you know. <clears throat> you can't, you know, you got you to stay with God. You got to stay with Jesus, okay? Do it like that. You got to put him first. You got to speak that word. You got to get it from here down in here. You can't speak it one day and five or six or seven days later go back and speak it because, see, you've lost the ability of bringing that word down out of your mind into your spirit in those four or five days you didn't stay with it. Now, I've never heard nobody say that, so I guess that's hot off the press. <laughs> Let's go to Daniel 3. Now, I'm just going to show you some things about Jesus here, about God and Jesus in the Bible, that they've they done marvels and wonders. So Daniel 3, everybody know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar had made a creed. Boy, I, I got to reading that this week, and, and it seems to me like we're living right in that day, and they're making so many creeds, but it's against the Constitution. Thank you now. Shake your heads like a little dog. Remember the little dog thing? Yeah. <laughs> they sit up in the back of the your car. You seen them little dogs? Yeah. So let's shake our head. Yes, yes, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> Praise God. Nebuchadnezzar made a creed that if anybody bowed down to worship God, they would be thrown in the fire and furnace. Out of the multitudes of the people there that day, probably a lot gathered in that nation. <clears throat> Everybody bowed down but three little Hebrew men or young boys or old teenagers or about 20 year old. They wasn't very old. They didn't bow down. <clears throat> and somebody had to run tell them to see so he couldn't see them so many people. But he said, out of all, they said, out of all of the people here, three little young men didn't bow down. So that made Nebuchadnezzar, I mean Nebuchadnezzar mad. And he said, heat the furnace up seven times. Uh-oh. When we step out from on that covenant, Satan ain't going to have no problem heating the furnace up on you seven times. That's right. Amen. Because his ministry, Satan's ministry is to steal, kill, and destroy him. But Jesus' ministry is I come to seek and save that which was lost. And that's my will to heal because he said, I heal the leper. 
When that one leper man come to Jesus Christ and he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me whole. And Jesus said, I will. Now, why can't people understand that, that that's Jesus' will? Well, that might be his will for them, and it's not my will for me. My Bible says Jesus is no respecter of persons. He don't respect this man more than he does respect me. What he'll do for him, he'll do for me. If Woodrow come and ask me, said, Max, if you will, you can do this for me, I, I, and, and it'll be all right. You can, you can do this, you, you know. If it, he said, if you will. When I say, I will, that settles my will for him. When Jesus said to that leper, I will, that settled the will of God Almighty and Jesus Christ that it was his will to heal. 90%, 95% of the ministry of Jesus Christ when he walked on earth was, was healing the sick. Casting out devils. Amen. <coughs> so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't do it. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. See, Nebuchadnezzar was ruled by Satan. A lot of, lot of governors and priests back then and kings, the ministry of, of Satan was ruling that nation. Just like it is our nation. I'll just go ahead and say it. Amen. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And rose up in haste and spoke and said unto these counselors, Did not we cast three men into the midst of the fiery furnace? They answered and said, Yes, king, oh, true. We put three in there. But look what happened. Look what happened. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they gave no hurt, and from and the form of the fourth man, fourth is like the Son of God. I'll guarantee you if we stay with Jesus, I'll guarantee you if we stay with the Word of God, I'll guarantee you if we don't bow down to anything that's not, praise God, to, that's, if we bow down to anything that's not in this Word, we won't be in trouble. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And you've got... Jesus says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that can the, rightly divide the word of God. I mean, you've got to study to see what's in that word. This is the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. And if we don't study to see what he left us in the will, we ain't going to know it. It's just like the man in New York years ago. There's an old man died, and he left another person a million dollars. But that person didn't know it. He didn't know that old man. He didn't look like he had a million. He didn't live like he had a million. Don't let looks be your final authority. Come on. And this man, they come to him and said, Sir, uh, this man died. He said, Yeah, I know. He was a good friend of mine. Sure was. I hate that. And they said, Well, he's left you one million dollars. Well, I didn't know that. That's just like the Bible. People says, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I didn't know Jesus left that for us. He did, praise God. Hallelujah. So, you won't know what's in the will unless you read it. Or hear it preached. And most of the time, it's like Hosea 4, 6. People are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. And when they receive knowledge, they don't receive it. And when they hear knowledge, they don't receive it. Amen. Let's read on here. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men and other ones like unto the Son of God. Can you believe that? I mean, they stooped down and the furnace was so hot that it burnt the, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar. Burnt them up just looking in there. And the five of them, they went in bound up. Can, come on, come on, stay with me. They went in there bound up. Mm -hmm. But during, I said during, they wasn't out there, but during that, fi that fiery furnace, God ministered to them and God put the bondage off of their lips, put those ropes off of them and he was standing walking with Jesus. Don't never give up with your troubles, with your, with your circumstances because Jesus is right there. He is going to loose those bonds on you and you'll be walking around and if people could see in the spirit realm, they'd say, boy, I see one like to Jesus Christ walking with you folks. Glory to God. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the fire furnace and, and spoke to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and your, uh, ye servants of the Most High God. And now he's calling God uh, the Most High God. Come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the kings and the counselors being gathered together saw these men. People are watching you to see what we do in crisis mode. That's good too. That, I mean, that, that's, that's really good. That's right off the press. I failed. Have you failed? Mm -hmm. Come on, if there's anybody holier than thou, we'll guess that devil out of you. Come on up. No, there's nobody holier than because we've all messed up. We all fail in our faith when we don't keep faith before our eyes. That's right. I learned that a couple weeks ago. I used to walk three days a week, but now I had to cut it down to two because of my knee. My knee's really bothering me. But you know what I do? I've added about four more scriptures of healing to my knee every day. Are you listening to me? Well, Pastor, I don't believe that'll do no good. Well, you just believe what you want to. But you've come too late for me to, to believe anything else. I know, but I know that Jesus loves me. He saved me, and he wants to heal. He's, all, he's already healed me, praise God. Let me rephrase it, praise God. And the Holy Ghost is in us, the manifester. Amen. I'm going to say this. You've got to talk to your ailments in Jesus' name. Get out of my body. Don't you pain my body no more. Do not pain my elbow, my knee, my back. Don't you do that, Satan. Because see, all bad things comes from Satan. And God is a good God. The Bible's full of it. He, Jesus even said, let's pray this way. Pray, thy will be done, thy kingdom be come on the earth as it is in heaven. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And they saw to get together and saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of a fire uh, had passed on them. Couldn't you smell the singed hair? Because it wasn't none. I remember my grandmother, you know, they used to kill all the hens on Saturday night or Sunday morning. Used to drain their necks out there, man, and, 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 and kill them. Then they'd pluck them and, and put them in the in the cooker for chicken and dumplings. But I remember sometimes, I don't know why they done that, but they put them up them, them them hens over the fire and you could and you could smell that singed tire. But these guys, you couldn't even smell one of their heads. That was singed. I'd come through that real good, but who <laughs> said that? <laughs> Praise God. Well, let me move on here and get, get out of here. John 5, let's look in the New Testament. John 5, verse 1. We see here now that Jesus was by the market, uh, was there in Jerusalem by the, by the sheep market, a pool which is called the Hebrew tongue, Beth, Bethesda, having fine portions. You know what Bethesda means? It means hospital. If you read that and study that word and look it up in the, in the Greek, it means hospital. They were multitudes of people laid on that porch. But they were waiting for a man uh, the, the, in, a, in a certain season. I thank God we don't have to wait for a certain season no more. Do you? Amen. Glory to God. He was waiting for a certain season to come while the pool was stirred up and was looking for some man. <laughs> looking for the wrong thing. And he, Jesus finally talked to him and he and watch this, a certain man was there which had been affirmed me 38 years. He was in that condition every day on that hospital porch 38 years and hadn't got healed. Why? Because he was looking for a man. Never get your eyes on man. Back in the day, in the late 80s and early 90s, a lot of people got disheartened 
because they were looking at men and men deceived them back then. Are you listening? People had their mind on people. I really loved Brother Hagin's teaching, but he, he never did make me, give me any reason to have my faith in him. He always talked about Jesus. He's the only man I know of in ministry in those days, the only one I know of that I, that I believe in all my heart that never was in a scandal. Can I have a mate? Amen right there. Amen. Now, so we see that Jesus met this man had an infirmity. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that uh, that uh, he had been now a long time in that case, he said to him, Will you be will you be made whole? Watch this. Jesus asked him. Said, Will you be made whole? And the empty man, the crippled man, answered and said, Sir, I have no man. Oh, my dear. Don't come to church because of my preaching. Well, that ain't don't matter no way. People don't come to my preaching no way. Must think it's not no good, but it's the word anyway. <coughs> I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I'm coming, another step of that in. Jesus looked at him and said, Get up and take thy bed and walk. When Jesus spoke those words, man, something hit that man, and he got up, and he took his bed and walked home with it under his arm. Another marvel, another wonder. But it's all about Jesus. Can I have an amen? I want to show you two more scriptures, and we're out of here. Uh, see, I didn't lie to you. I used to say I've got I've got the three closing, but I won't, I've got one today really. I told you, just don't get looks about it. Let's look at uh, well in John eleven. Now this was when Lazarus got sick, and Lazarus died. What did Jesus do? He waited. Three days before he ever started going over there. Well, why did he wait so long? Because he said, as, as when he went to the tomb of Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you that you've heard my prayers. What was he doing for three days? He was praying. He got the word from God. It's going to be all right. Get him up from the, from the dead. And Jesus went to the tomb. And let's look over there in about 40. Let's see, 40, verse 44 or something like that. See? See, 40. Right here, I knew that you heard me always, Father. Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Can you pray that way? Can you speak God's word and have enough faith in us? I thank you that you've heard my prayer. The Bible says, put Jesus, put the word of God in remembrance to him, Isaiah 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus comes with the Well, that's a marvel, wasn't it? That's the first funeral Jesus ever had. He messed it up, didn't he? I raised him from the dead. Are you listening to me? Well, that's Jesus. Well, the same Holy Ghost lives in us. I'm, I'm not got enough faith, I'll tell you right now, to go pick him up a man out of the casket and throw him against the wall and say, you live, you know. I, I'm getting there maybe in my lifetime I'll have that much faith. But listen, Jesus was all about his father. We need to be all about Jesus. <coughs> Let's look at the next one. Luke. Uh, <clears throat> Luke chapter 7, verse 11. Now Jesus only preached that was involved in two funerals. Watch this. And it came to pass after that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and much people and when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw that he had compassion upon her on the woman and said unto her weep not 
Now, listen. Jesus had so much compassion on that mom that he told her, he said, don't cry. Can you imagine telling somebody at a funeral home, don't cry, don't cry. Well, then, you know, it'd just be, it'd be, be bad for today because people's used to that. I mean, they just, you know, they let the spirit of grief just come in and just destroy their lives. But we got to have some uh, <clears throat> time of grieving. Most people do have to have some time. But look at Jesus. And he that was dead set up. What you do now, man, if you're going, if you're in a city down there in Hyman, and there's a funeral procession going through Hyman, and all of a sudden the man said up, the man, the dead man said up and said, Hey guys, how you doing? Whew. <laughs> Most of us would drop the that were pallbearers would have dropped the casket, dropped the whatever they, and said, I'm out of here, man. They would Jesus only preached two funerals or only was involved in two funerals and he messed them up. Why? Because he could do marvels. He could do signs and he could do miracles. How many of you know that Jesus is still in the marvel and the miracle working today? We belittle him. We put him in a jar, close the lid and says, that's all you are, Jesus. No, that's not all he is. He's everything we need. He's everything we'll ever have to need. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. On the cross of Calvary. Amen. This gets me excited when somebody goes and raises up the dead. I can just picture in my mind being one little carnet, all burned on the back of that thing. Jesus stopped and touched that casket. And that man sat up and said, Hey, boss, how y'all doing this morning? I don't know who would outrun the fastest. <laughs> I might, I might take him down, even if I got a sore knee. I might. I mean, I'll tell you what. You don't know what you do, but what we would need to do is to have enough Jesus in us. <coughs> praise God. <clears throat> Glory to God. I'll get some uh, texts on this message. <laughs> well, I'm just uplifting Jesus. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, there's nothing that's impossible to man. The things that are impossible with man are possible with Jesus. That was John Osteen's favorite scripture. The people, the, well, I'll tell you what, nothing is impossible to Jesus Christ. Look what happens. And there came a fear upon all, and they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet is risen among us and that the God hath visited his people. He was more than a great prophet. He was Jesus Christ of Nazareth, praise God, who was operating under the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But he was still God's son, but he was the son of man too. Can I have an amen this morning? Yeah. Are you ready for marvels? Amen. I'm ready for signs, wonders, and marvels. But see, we got to expect them to happen. We've got to expect them to happen. You remember the scripture in Acts chapter 3? A crippled man was laying there at the, at the gate called Beautiful. And, and, and you know, Jesus passed that way every day, a lot of times. And that man was there, but Jesus never healed him. Why? Because there was no expectancy in his heart. There was no faith in his heart. But here comes Peter and John on another day. And they look at that man. He was rattling that little old tin can probably. Said, give me some money. Give me some money. I need money. But they looked at him and said, money have I not. But such I have, I give unto you. Now what? This, is, this is, should minister to us. Such I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And they put out their hands, and he made a move to put his hands in his, and they lifted him up. Now I see this. I see this being. Uh, I've seen it done in a mess when there was no faith. And I've seen. I was in a hospital one time over in Hazard, and these two guys come in there. 
And they quoted this same scripture. And they reached and grabbed this poor woman by the hand and took her out, throwed her out on the floor. Oh, this is true. Throwed her out on the floor and said, be healed. Well, she didn't have an ounce of faith. And, and the Bible says God only works miracles as he wills. So we got to be careful about that. Amen? But he'll do the same for you and me as he did for Paul. But that man got healed. He leaped and he walked for the first time. Where is that Jesus at today? Where is that Holy Ghost at today? It's here. What's the problem? It's not the Holy Ghost or God or Jesus. The problem lays with us. Amen? We need to spend more time. I need to spend more time. Uh, I spent a lot of time this week here ministering uh, this word to myself this week so I'd uh, get it pretty good for you all this morning. I hope it's been good. Amen. Amen. Let's bow your heads right now. Lord, we're ready for signs, wonders, and miracles. We're ready to see the magnificent Jesus and the miracle-working power powerful Jesus, the graceful Jesus, the, the merciful Jesus, do signs and wonders in our air. And Lord, I thank you that we'll be open and available. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus just spoke to me and he says it takes more availability than it does ability. So I pray for availability to be in our hearts no matter where we are. Don't back up when you go to change the ministry somebody the Lord says. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for that. I thank you, Father. I'm Pastor Max Long, pastor of Faith Life Church here in Knott County. And I would like to invite you to church. We're 1.5 miles off of the four lane, Route 80. Turn on the junction at the 1098. Come out 1.5 miles, and we're on the left. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. We believe he's the healer. We believe he's the deliverer. We believe he's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If that, does, that, if that minister to you, come and be with us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Just drive out on 1098 until you see the red and white sign, Faith Life Church. You can't miss us. We're looking for you, and we praise God that you're blessed in Jesus' name. Come and see us now. Amen and amen. We thank you for watching, and we would like to remind you that Faith Life Church has relocated to 3538 Possum Trot Road near Lebron, Kentucky. Also, we now have three ways that you can enjoy our videos each week. One, on our YouTube channel as usual. Two, on our new Rumble channel. And finally, three, directly on our official Facebook page. We thank you once again for watching. We hope God blesses you and that you have a wonderful week.